welcome to this lesson about the task categories. You might have had already seen one of our lessons that says the ticket categories. This lesson is about the task categories, but in essence, it's, it's the same. Well, can we find them? We go to admin, and in this case, we go to the projects and the tasks, and there's the task categories. Again, indeed, similar setup as under the service desk where you have the ticket categories. Lapsing this one again. Let me go into the task categories. By default, there's only two in there from the system. There's your, your standard, your non editable same as the ticket one. It's a system one, not active. That's always your kind of your, your default. You can't even edit it. So if you want to kind of go from there and uh, make, make a new one, you basically say copy and uh, that's where you can go. Right now, the standard that's in the system, that's your default one, that's your system one, that's an active one. Of course, we can make it inactive, but then I have nothing active. I need to make at least one new one to uh, inactivate this one. So you might be able to say, you know, look at this one, I'll, I'll make a copy of this one and I'll go from there to make one new task category. And your company name, and I'll put default. Make sure it's active. You put a nickname. You can change the color if you would like to. The header, and, and because tasks are a little bit, uh, in essence, already default, uh, more limited on information that is available there. Uh, also, you will see that this uh, is a little bit more simple to set up as well. You have your task category and you have your title. Uh, there's only do a little bit an option to, to change it, but of course, a task is a title. I would never change it. The task category, uh, I would kind of say not required, but as you can see, it's not available. Basically, all the list values. So those ones are kind of staying. You have your main body where you have your description. Of course, that's visible. You have your timeline. Uh, I would say that one is not visible because uh, the timeline is not really working on a task itself. It does work only on the, on the timeline itself that you specify for the task. Checklist, of course, you want to have the checklist available for, uh, for the tasks and you can limit them. If you see, you know what, I only want to have a specific set for this particular category available. Forms as well, uh, you can limit which ones you want to have available. Again. You can also say there's none available. Uh, that makes it a little bit uh, easier. So there's no options. Uh, we human beings, when we have less options, it's easier to get to where we want to get to. Same thing with the notification templates. Right now, it's by, by default already set to all, which I think is fine. And you have some other options where you want to have the system rounding off to the nearest minutes. Uh, I would say for uh, a task, you usually always do the actual time. So this one, I would say do not round. There's also another setting in Autodesk, uh, was explained earlier in the settings, where you also can control the task settings to do not round. Uh, this, this is an extra layer, but I will say do not round. Uh, require users to enter the reason for completion and completing a task. I would say turn the one off because a task is a more simple. For a ticket, you might say, yeah, you do it. For a task, it's usually simple items and they already put a note in that they say why they complete it and then they press complete and they would get another pop-up saying why to complete it. Now you can copy and paste your last note, but it's just additional handling. So uh, I would suggest to uncheck that one, but leave the, the task stop what's in place. And again, also require titles and task notes. I would kind of turn the one off too, to make it a little bit more faster to be able to put notes into the system. That's the general one. Then, of course, we have the details tab. Let's see what we can do over here. Company, I would say yes, but you can also make it a, make it a decision. So, you know, once somebody is already in the project, somebody's kind of focused on that particular project, why listing the, the company name again? So it depends a little bit on how you want to control what you want to show to your people. Like I said, the less the lesser information is better. It's a little bit more focused. Usually when you're in your project, you know very well which company that particular is. So uh, you can change over here by clicking on the little hamburger menu saying edit field if you want to have it visible. And in this case, uh, although I said maybe no, as you can see, there's no option to change it. It is by default uh, required and visible. Same, you might have options for the projects, but again, that one is also uh, kind of a regulatory field. The status, you can make it require invisible. I would say yes, it's visible because people would need to know uh, where they are. And priority, 
that's a good one. Priority, I don't think it really applies to a uh, to a task. You have a kind of sequence that you need to do. The entire project has a priority, but I wouldn't say for specific priorities per task. So I would make that one not visible. And then you press OK. Then you have your sections and your fields. Also, a lot of stuff that that is uh, in here. Um, I see, for example, here like like client portal access. Since a task doesn't come from the client portal. Uh, something that you don't really want to see. So we're going to put it all the way down under the section hidden fields. You see over here, hidden fields. So I'm moving it all the way down to get it kind of out of the uh, out of the way. Purchase order number two is for me not something that uh, somebody needs to see. Purchase order number is just for internal. Um, the issue and the issue reported by, it's not really, those are things that are more handy for tickets. But in a in a project, they are not uh, not needed. We're gonna move them on out too. Face, yes, you want to see the one. Priority order, yes, you want to see the one. Predecessor task, you want to see the one. Contract, I'm also gonna put it out because there's no need uh, on, on the contract. That's that's controlled on a high level. Then you have your schedule. Your task type, fixed work, yeah, we can leave it in there. Start date, end date, estimate, yeah, they definitely need to see that one. You can make it uh, as, as, uh, as a required field. Change order hours, since we don't use the change orders on this one, we also move the one to the end. Now we have a start time, we have an end time and a duration. If you want to add a couple of more like uh, the, the, the end date in there, you can also move that one up. i move this one up to show you how we can get to there. And we put it in there. That's a good information to have a start time and an end time. Estimate, like I said, is also good. And I probably want to have this one start no earlier than in there as well to give the give it a little bit more uh, body on, on when to start this one. Department. Uh, if you don't use too much departments, you can also leave the one out. We have the work type that you want to see, primary resource role, yes, secondary resources roles, uh, yeah, we can leave it on there, that's good visibility. Contacts, not applicable, it says it already uh, here, it's, it, there's no true contacts on a task, so that can go away too. And then we have some user-defined fields, in this case if we don't have user-defined fields, we can also move that one to the, uh, oh sorry, that's, that's even a, a section, so user-defined fields, there is, right now there is no nothing, that's why I overlooked it, it's indeed a uh, section, so this is clean. Very clean. Let's go to the insights. And again, you can see this is also already uh, much cleaner. Uh, here we have the company, uh, kind of a, a duplicate section, which was also in, uh, in, in the header. So you might say, because it's all here, already in your details, the company is there. You can say, you know, I'm going to hide it from here. So you can drag and drop it here, but you can also go to the hamburger menu and say hide inside. Time summary, total hours worked. Yes, I definitely would like to have that one on there because that tells you how much hours you are in. So that's a good one. By default, there's a couple of hidden insights. Uh, for example, project within percent is complete and project activity. I think this one, the project within complete, uh, would be a good one. In this case, you can't move it up. You really have to uh, slide it up here. And over there, I make this one visible because that I think is always a good idea for the guys uh, when they work on it, that they can see how much this is complete. Hopefully, if they say, see something like, hey, it's, it's close to completion, like 90, 95%, that they have an extra hunt to say, you know, let's push through, let's get this project out of the way. So I think that would be a good one to, uh, to show. In here, there's a whole bunch of more uh, items that you can also make available. Like activity summary, you have dependencies. Uh, if you use the work list, you can also keeping, uh, keeping it in there, the location. So it all depends on how much you feel you need to show to your engineers or when you get feedback from your engineers on how much information they want to see. Our, our basically our default is the less information, the better it is. But every company has a little bit different way of working. Every engineer is maybe a little bit different. And this way you can control it. You might even say that you create a task category per engineer. Because one engineer needs to have a lot of information and can handle it. And your other engineers might have uh, lesser information. You create then two task categories for your uh, one engineer and for the rest of your engineers. And by uh, a rule, you can, and that's a separate lesson, 
by specific rules you can control uh, by uh, when a engineer is selected, which uh, task category is being applied. So that can basically be set up automatically. And our work for rules section lesson will give you a little bit more guidance on how to do those kind of things. This is for sure the category. And with these categories, you, you depend on how you, or you control what is visible on the screen. And it took time to control not to have that information overload. Now we're gonna press save and close. Let's not forget it at the end. And uh, it gives me an error. In this case, you have added both end date and end date race, and that's correct. You may only have one of these visible. See, there's always stuff that I'm learning to uh, that is uh, controlled in the system. So we go back here, and, and this is where it refers to the end date duration and the end date. So it's basically a combined menu. So I think it was a good one that uh, the end date is not needed. We move it over there together with start date because we have those ones now in a different setup start date and time and end date duration now we press save and close and now it's good and now since this one i have it active now i can also make say this one is going to be my default one and there's a little message that two resources are configured to use the default task category if you change it this will be uh, will be the default these resources will start using the new default and you say yes that is okay and now the new standard is I don't want to use it anymore. I say to inactive. Here we go. We have a new task category cleaned up. Very, uh, very uh, nicely streamlined. And that's the one you can now use uh, going forward. And now you have kind of this one as your base reference. So your next task category, if you want to use it one, you use this one as a copy and then maybe you change it to uh, your company name. And then with that particular engineer's name that wants to see either way less information or maybe more information. That's all for the task categories. Uh, again, there's a lot more detailed information also in the, in the joining lesson for the ticket categories. And if there's any more questions, then uh, you can uh, post a comment on our Facebook group. Thank you.